morning, everyone. How you doing? It's Friday. It is going to be very, very um, hot in Livermore today. It's going to get up to 90 and then dip down this weekend. 90 is okay. Much above that, I'm not too happy, but thank goodness we do have air conditioning. There are people on the coastline in California that don't have air conditioning, and when it hits 90, man, they are in trouble. Let me turn down my sound so we're not hearing the popping. Come on. I got to stand up to do that. I might have just muted it. There we go. Okay, good deal. So anyways, um, I, I'm, getting, I'm getting pretty good at wearing my face mask. This one does need to be washed, but like today I have to go to Trader Joe's and I'm pretty proud that I'm gonna be sporting a blue and white outfit together. Out at our offices, there's a florist shop there and they shut down, but now they're opening back up for Mother's Day. I mean, this is their season. And I went out there to place an order for my mom and the uh, wonderful ladies in their home for Mother's Day. And I went, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe this. That's my fabric on that mask. I couldn't believe it. That was from my first line with PMB Textiles. And good morning, everyone. And I'm sitting there going, well, I guess somebody thought that was throwaway fabric at, <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so that just made me really happy. Gosh, that line was probably 15 years old. It was called Color Bridge. So I actually I'd probably, I kind of should have asked her for the mask so I could just kind of cut it up and keep it because I don't have any of that fabric left. But anyways, so John said to me, by the way, I'm doing this solo. John is on a meeting right now. So if it goes awry, we are in trouble. All right. So uh, John said, I think you better start clearing out a space in your sewing room. I have a lovely sewing room. It's just right under 500 square feet because at 500 square feet, it's an addition. We had to pay city taxes to schools. So I think it's like, I'm not kidding you, 499 square feet. The builder made sure it was just under. And then my little office is off to the side and that was a small bedroom that was 10 by 10. So I guess that puts me at about 600 square feet, which includes my office. But as you can imagine, it's full. I have two sewing machines, right? Here's my Bernina. And then I have one on the other side. I have my paint station because of Joanne Sharp's class. And I'm sitting there thinking, why is he telling me to clear out a space? And he kind of pointed to where. And so here, I've cleaned that out. You're looking at a miracle right there, right there under that stained glass window. And then over here, right there. So I don't know. And when I started cleaning it out, that means that's this is where my paint station was. And it, it needs to go over now where my books are. So <clears throat> this is where my paint station is now. The two right shelves are gone, all right? And I have to tell you, going through books was an exceedingly, hey Sue, exceedingly um, painful thing to do because... I love my books, but honestly, a lot of them are techniques I would never use. I like to design from scratch. So as I went through them, I thought, is this something I can really use or is it a sentimental memory? And that's what I realized these books meant to me, that it's, it's sentimental. So it's time to say goodbye to those. The other thing too, I have to look at now, I'm not planning on going anywhere soon, but when I'm gone, I know my kids are going to write me a thank you note for everything I'm doing in this house. I'm telling you, I am being brutal. So I kind of, I look at it. I'm not, I know there's that one gal that wrote the book and it was like, her thing was, does this item give me pleasure? I'm not sure if that's the word she uses. And if so, give it away, get rid of it if it doesn't. This is how I look at it, and it makes it a little bit easier, I think. I look at the item, and I'm going, are you giving me pleasure anymore, or am I using it, you, or whatever? And the answer is no. And then let's just say it's like an Eileen Fisher jacket that I paid a lot of money for. I think, isn't that wonderful that I can hand it to somebody else and they can get pleasure out of it? So I look at as it as shifting joy to somebody else. So that's how I'm handling my massive clean out, and I'll tell you, Although when I was in the middle of that book mass, I was not a happy camper. And when it was all done, I'm like going, 
<sighs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, give it to Rondi, who's on here, and she has a mini group, and they're going to go through the books and take what they want and then give it to the guild. And what I would suggest that they do is when guilds start meeting, just spread them out and say, have at it, take what you want. So that was kind of a real interesting process. Now today, we're going to do a fairly, well, not a simple block, but well, let's take a picture. Let me get down here. All right. I've changed my setup here. And I will tell you right now, the camera's doing a little freezing, freezing, just like right there. Let me get my hand out of the way. Okay. This is called a partial seam. And if you're a new quilter, what it means is that like when you put a nine patch together, you sew the, the three rows, the parts of the three rows, and then you sew across, sew across, and you've got your nine patch. Well, here we um, can't do that. So this is what they call partial seam. And this is another reason why you care about partial seam. Uh, here, where's my book? Many times I will work with blocks. Come on, let's go back, people. Well, you know what? I can stay down here. Many, uh-oh. John, I hope you're watching. There we go. <laughs> um, many times I will do scrap quilts. And then I will also do blocks of different sizes within these quilts. And so for instance, this particular scrapbook, I think I had six different projects in it. And, and um, oh, this was so much fun. But anyways, when I went to do my sampler, I have several different size blocks going into this sampler, okay? And periodically I would get into it I would, first of all, I try to sew it together in neighborhoods. So say right up here, you've got one, oh gosh, this weatherman thing, like right here, here, you got a nine patch of blocks. Okay, right there. I would sew that together and that's one neighborhood. Then I'll go to another neighborhood and you hope it will go together straightforward, but sometimes it doesn't. So that's another reason you want to do partial seams. Here we go. By the way, I am really enjoying doing this. And when the quarantine is over, I probably will not be doing it three times a week, but I am going to continue doing this because I think it's a really great way for quilters to gather and meet. So here is a partial seam block at its most simplest form, and it is in your pattern. All right. So this one I thought I would piece. We learned how to do flying geese yes, Wednesday, last lesson. And um, the, the flying geese are different sizes, but the numbers are in your pattern. I will tell you this measures finished two by three. Wait, no, hold on, hold my horses. Uh, two, two, it finishes two by four, five, six. Yeah, two by four. And so you would cut the background at, now I'm gonna show off five and a quarter. And that's how you get your quarter square triangles. And you can do it the, quick method like I taught on on Wednesday or you can do the old-fashioned way and you would cut these at two and seven eighths okie doke and then the center one I know some of you are still waiting for patterns um, is cut at two and a half two and a half by two and a half so here's the deal what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this to this this to this I hate how slow this camera's going. I don't, I mean, I don't understand what's going on. I'm going to put this on top. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna sew all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna sew, say, to here. All right, right there. So I'm gonna go sew that right now using my quarter inch. And somebody said, oh, I wish I could see you actually sewing. I do too but it's not an option. I've got my two cameras going here and, and, and my cameraman doesn't show up to work, so I'm stuck with the whole job. I'm switcher, I'm cameraman, I'm host, producer, and I'm having a ball. And I'm not even gonna bother to backstitch, all righty? Actually, doggone it, I was gonna clean this machine before today because it's starting to act um, sound a little clunky. I'm glad I turned the iron on. And with my little tail. 
and grab my clippers. All right, I got a thread party going on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press it out right there just a little bit to this, to that guy, all right? Just a little bit. Oh, and the good news is, is at this point, all the biases are sewn up, so I don't have to be super careful with pressing. Now I'm going to take and sew this block. Come on. This block to this block. I'm wondering if I go real slow if it makes a difference. So I'm going to bring this over. They will fit together beautifully. And again, if they don't fit to together beautifully, stop, because that means you've cut something wrong. I'm going to sew with this side up so that I can see where the little X is and I can stay one hair towards the raw edge so I don't cut off that tip. Mother's Day. I didn't know if that was a US of A thing or if it's all over and I Googled it right before I came on and I believe it's an all over thing. I can't imagine why John had me clear the space. I think I heard him talking to Bernina. Oh, that's all I'm gonna say. Wouldn't that be so exciting? All right, so now I've got this seam going all the way across and I'm going to go press again. I'm going to press in this direction because I don't want to cut my little tip off. And again, I don't have to be careful with my pressing because I don't have any exposed biases. All right, let's see. There we go. And this block I would for sure lay out because it would be really super easy to do this by mistake. Ask me how I know. At some point we'll have to have a lesson on thread picking. Oh, okay, this one is not perfect. I'm not having such a good day today like I did when I did my star. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up this outside edge. See how this, this is bigger. This piece is bigger than the sewn unit. So I am, I'm, now I'm gonna make it fit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat it into submission, all right? So I'm going to put a pin in at the end, put a pin in at this end. I'm praying this is a crosswise grain so I can pull it, barely. The bottoms are not. But what I'm gonna do, now I got a pro, okay, no, I don't have a problem. Okay, if you have one side that's bigger, remember what I ta taught you? It goes on the bottom. And you remember that because your bottom is your biggest part. So I wanna make sure I am not gonna cut this tip off. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little purple pen that disappears in a couple days or I can get rid of it. And I'm just gonna sew and I'm gonna give it a little pull pull is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna make sure when I come down here that um, this doesn't flip over and I've gotta shut the back door, you guys. The neighbor's mowing the lawn, I'll be right back. telling you it's nothing like live professional TV all right oh. actually this thing is way off I don't know how I got so off on this again I'm just doing it so you can feel better about your work you know the thing about fabric and I was with my mini group yesterday via um, zoom somebody mentioned that Diana McClun had used the expression fabric is fluid and I really liked that because what that means is that you can bend, you can, you can whip it into submission. I have done a little bit of woodworking and you make the cut wrong and there's no pulling and this and thating to get it right. So let me get that here. Oh, good, it worked. Yay. Okay, let me go iron this. 
Remember, big on bottom. Iron, iron, iron. Now we're gonna go. What's gonna be interesting, I always watch this when it's done to see how the camera worked and all that. It's gonna be interesting on the restreaming on YouTube if it's, if it's not bumpy like this. Okay, I've gotta pull out this little seam there that got tucked under when I pressed. And then I'm going to, see this one's okay. Isn't that interesting? I'm gonna, I am gonna pin it though, what the heck. Wait, am I doing this right? Yep, I am, okay. Yeah, when I was when I would teach stars, I'm telling you, of 20 people, five would sew the tips on backwards, and that's why I always line this stuff up. Let's see. Yeah, that's okay. Let me see where the little seam is here. It's in a quarter inch. I'll be good. I'm gonna turn it over and sew it this way this time. So do you guys have any big plans for Mother's Day? I I just, what I did was I went and sent my mom and the ladies flowers. Oh yeah, that's the whole flower shop thing. And I'm gonna try and go over, but what they're doing is they have the, like this plexiglass thing between us, which I believe I've shared with you. And um, we have to set an appointment. And so what you pray is that your appointment happens when she's awake. When she's feisty, she is like flipping hilarious. Okay, so far so good. So let me iron this. I'm gonna iron it this way. It's naturally wanting to do that. To me, ironing, pressing, is because of ease of construction. It has very little to do with other things. And now, and now I've got this, like this. And all I have to do is flip this. Where'd we go? I am gonna put a little pin in there. I do love expensive pins. And people ask what brand, like, I don't know, just good, sharp, fine ones. And do they bend and all that? Yes, they do. That's part of the game. All right. Just like your tires on your car need to be replaced. Actually, it's nothing like that. Come down to that where that dot was. I maybe take a back stitch. Why not? All right. And cut that off. And here's this. That is so dang cute. So cute. Okay, let me iron it. And then I want to talk about what's going on on my design wall. I'm kind of getting ahead with some of the blocks so that I can figure out the order I'm teaching and this and that. And the whole thing. Oh, no, wait. Before I go up there, let's talk about this. I want to talk about squaring up again. I actually want this, get on there, get on there. I want to even get this flatter. I'm going to go get some Mary Ellen's best press. Hold on. So I am going to spray this and hopefully the iron's almost hot. I also, since Wednesday, sewed the center of this together, of the whole quilt together. I thought, okay, commit, sew together the applique pieces. All right, so here we go. So here I got a six and a half inch square ruler, all right? What I wanna be so careful of is that I don't cut off any of these tips. And that's what I would find, okay, cause this one's like not quite perfect. I would find students do that. They would just go whack step down and then the tips go bye-bye. So I would take my six and a half inch ruler and put this on here. And I wanna make sure that the, the little pointy points are exactly in one quarter inch from the edge. And I can tell that right there. This one's a little less than a quarter inch. So I'm gonna bring that up that way. 
Um, this one is way short, but it's not so short that it's not workable. Then I will go ahead and, and trim. But I like using this ruler because I, it, it, if it's hanging out of, under the ruler, it's going to be fine. Otherwise, don't do it. I, I'm, I'm just so cautious when it comes to squaring things up. So let's take a look at the quilt now behind me. Okay, come on. There we go. So let me bring this up a little bit. All right. So I've got the original quilt over there, but then I have this. And it's starting to kind of take shape with me. So I'm going to put this, um, I'm going to say, I think it's down here. I don't know. I don't, let me see. That goes there, that goes there. Yeah, and then another pattern could go there. Now, when I put blocks up, this is what I'm looking at. Okay, right now, I would not actually put this here to this because it's the same fabric. I don't like that. But the other thing is as I'm assessing my blocks, I can see here that I've got a couple oranges that just jump out like there's no tomorrow. I will then repeat it in another block. And or in the end, when we go and we add in the squares or the half square triangles, I can pick up those colors again and help have your eye go over the whole surface. So in other words, I would not want like this and this all in a row. I would not want that. I, I want my eye to pop. The other one, the other one that's really standing out to me are the greens. So I put it up here, I put it here. This probably would not go here, it would probably go over here. Keeps your eyes moving. The other thing is I did crack into that other bundle and I use this green too. But I'm, I honestly, I was kind of like going, I don't know if I like this. And now it's starting to really, really come together. So I want to talk, um, we're going to do fusing on this down the road, the fusing applique. There, there's the center. You can see that. And I want to talk about what I would suggest that you use. So I'll give you time to order it from, from, from us, from your local quilt shop, from whatever. But what we're going to use is we're going to use Apple stick. Okay. Apple stick. It's, um, it's competitor would be steam -a -seam, So you understand what I'm talking about. And what it is, is you can cut out the shapes and you can put it up on your wall and arrange and arrange because here's the deal guys. When we get into here, you're going to be doing your own floral arrangement. And I want to be able to put it up on my wall and make sure it looks okay. The other thing is you'll see here, we've got the applique down here that goes over into here. We have this one that goes over into there. So I wanna be able to look at this while I am designing on my wall. So I want a product that it will stay up and I don't have to put 10,000 pins in. And then once I get it exactly the way I want it, then I come over with my, my cordless iron. It's why I love this cordless iron. And I just go like this and I iron it down and then it's temporarily held to it, not permanently, but, but a really pretty good hold. So I love my Apla stick. It comes in sheets and it comes in a roll. Now why you might want to consider sheets, and I believe there's a free ice cream cone pattern in here too, which is pretty cute, is that, you guys are going to believe this, I actually didn't have any of these in the house, I had to run over to work this morning, I couldn't believe it. Um, I, you have the pattern, and it's got these different little things that you can play with, okay, and arrange with, and of course you can do your own thing too, but I actually printed it right onto this on my printer. All right, and what I would say, I printed it on the dull side, and then the, this is the sticky side, and what I would do is I would then, let's say I want these to be yellow, I would just cut fabric a little bit bigger, 
iron it onto it, then cut it out. So I don't have to trace. And I will tell you, in working with Kay Brooks on this, I said, well, quilters always trace, always. And she said, no, they don't. Today's the first day I ran it through my printer and I am absolutely hooked. I'm gonna say, okay, let's just see. Now the other thing, and I'll go over more of this when we um, get going on to that. Um, the other thing is I would only feed it in one at a time, all right? There are instructions on how to do it. So if you don't have something that is a fusible something, you need to get it, all right? Oh, the other really cool thing about this stuff is you don't get um, um, thread booger, uh, needle boogers. And you know what I'm talking about with that, right? Usually when you use many fusibles, you have to have an alcohol swab there so that you can wipe down the needle. You don't, you don't have to have that with this. So I'm talking about this now because um, probably we'll get to the applique. I, I don't know quite when, but I wanna make sure you aren't just sitting there high and dry without anything. If you have not received the printed pattern and you want a digital pattern please come to my facebook and let me know okay and what i need from you is i need your email address your full name and if you know your account name that would be great too and then i can just get it over to kristen and she can shoot it to you as I said on Wednesday, Brandy is slammed. Uh, we took care of a call this morning and, and the person was quite frustrated, rightfully so, because she couldn't get through to Brandy. We're not ignoring you, you guys. I promise you, we are not ignoring you. We're just doing the best we can. And speak of the best we can, set your alarm tomorrow for this one. At 10 o'clock Pacific time, Ricky is doing a piano off with the pianist in Lady Antebellum. I talked about it Wednesday, but in case it has slipped your mind, get it on the calendar. I would not miss this for anything. And also, as we're sheltering in place, uh, remember we're at offering a screaming deal at TQS. You can get half a year uh, for $19.95 and you have access to all the shows of which I'm gonna say there's 325 plus, and you can just go to the search section and put in whoever you want or whatever technique you want, and all the shows will pop up, and then you just hit the show number and you are there. So I am so excited about tomorrow morning. I cannot stand it. Um, so, okay, Jane, so you said it does work on wool, okay. Yeah, I haven't really used it on wool also. So I, oh, my design wall. Yeah, I'll tell you the details of it. You can't get it anymore. <laughs> it's Celotex. Underneath, underneath the grid, which I'll talk about in a moment, is Celotex. It was an insulation material that has been banned because of the stuff that's in it. And what I did was I covered it with this gridded flannel stuff here. I got it from um, Eddie's Quilting Bee. His mom designed it, Diana Leone, and he he's in um, uh, Sunnyvale, I believe. And I wrapped it around the Celotex, and then I stapled it down or whatever, and then we liquid nailed it to the wall. So if I were to try and get it off, I think it would cause more problems than just leaving it alone. And I feel like it's got its face mask on with this stuff. But there are, all you do is what Libby Lehman did. She went to Home Depot, put a little pin cushion on her wrist and went and just started sticking things with pins. Oop, I'll take you. And she ended up with uh, in tile insulation ceiling things, you know, those squares. That's what she ended up with. But I don't think she has the grid on it. So let's see okay i have quilters select print and piece fuse light print that is for finished applique if you want to do that finished applique good all right but i'm going to do raw edge that said that said barbara black on this year's bom used it so go watch the first show of this year and then you can make a decision if you like that or not i forgot all about that okay i have not done it Let's say insulation board. The, the grid is from Eddie's Quilting Bee in Sunnyvale, California. I'm, I'm sure they have it. If not, let me know and I'll have Quilter Select come out with it because this is fabulous. The other thing I did was 
This is actually the back side of it. The other side had darker grids, just like the good side of the fabric versus the wrong side of the fabric. I chose to do it backwards and I'm not sure I would do that again. I didn't know if the grid lines would bug me to death. I love them because as I put my blocks up, they don't get all cattywampus. You know what I mean? Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Celotex is no longer sold. That's exactly right, Mary. Celotex is no longer sold, but there's a product that replaces it. Um, in my old sewing room here, which is now the guest bedroom, I had some sort of blue thing or something that was covered with white. So, and the pins were actually... Um, the pins were actually went into the other stuff easier. The flying geese were all the same size. Correct. Correct. They were all the same size. And just go back to Wednesday. Don't use those numbers. Use the numbers I gave you at the beginning of this. If you didn't write it down, just go back and rewatch and there it is. So I have a flannel black plastic tablecloth hanging on my wall for a, yeah. I mean, to me, Besides my blood sewing machine, rotary cutter, mat, and fabric, this design wall is one of the most important tools in my sewing room. And when I go up to the cabin to, to sew, I have foam core board that is quarter inch thick, and I forget how big it comes, maybe four by, that wouldn't be six, it's not that big. I don't know, but anyways, it can slide under the bed and I just covered it with some sort of flannel thing and that's what I use. I cannot work without this. All right, so, oh, garage door insulation boards. Okay, see, you guys are so smart. Can you use print and piece fuse light for this applique? I just said go watch Barbara Black's, um, Barbara Black's show the beginning of this year with our block of the month. I prefer that to me was designed for finished applique. Now there's no reason you can't do this finished applique, but I would prefer this by a long shot. Okay. And this is again, um, select Apple stick. So, uh, how, how much yardage did I use for this quilt? I don't know. It was just, I, I had a bundle. Somebody asked me that the other day that maybe had 25 fat quarters in it. And if you do the math on that, it's like six and a half yards or six and a quarter. I'm just pulling this off my head. That doesn't take that much fabric, you know? So, but I just broke the bundle because I wanted to play with all the fabrics that Edita designed. And so happy Mother's Day. Remember, if you need a gift for someone or you want your kids to get you something, a TQS membership is right in budget. And I'm going to be sitting with you guys tomorrow to watch the piano playoff. Have a great Mother's Day, you guys. It's always fun hanging with you.